In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. So I do want to preface the chaplain's report this way. Paul is talking to the churches at Galatia. And one of the things that he's discussing with them is he recalls that they had such a vigor that he appreciated about them. They had a real zeal to know God and to know the gospel. They wanted to learn about this Jesus person that Paul was teaching them about. There was a curiosity and a love for God's word that Paul saw in them and really, really wanted to take advantage of. And he did. I mean, there were several churches that were founded there in Galatia, in part because of Paul's teaching. And here in this particular passage, when he's writing back to these churches that he helped establish, there's a bit of remorse. Because he's saying, I remember when you guys were so zealous for the gospel. I remember when there was a thirst for the gospel message and that, you guys, even though I was telling you that there were some things in your life that you were going to have to change, some things that were going, you were doing wrong, there was this zeal, this desire to embrace the transformative power of the gospel. And this was something that excited Paul and that he really admired in them. And unfortunately, he's saying this attitude isn't there anymore. And he brings up the reason why here in the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, where he says, Where then is that sense of blessing you had? For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. So have I become your enemy by telling you the truth. And the reason I think that this is such a very powerful message by Paul is that these are not Paul's enemies, These are not people that Paul, at least on the surface, would have disagreements with. They were Christians just like Paul. And he's saying, guys, I remember when this was who you were. When you heard something coming from one of the apostles, you had a desire to do it. That you wanted to not just do it, you were excited and enthusiastic. And you wanted to dive in headfirst. And now when I tell you that there are some things you need to correct, you're fighting me on them. You're saying, no, 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 we we don't want to hear it. Go somewhere else. One of the things that is a common theme throughout the Bible, and you'll see this a lot in the book of Proverbs, is that people that welcome criticism, welcome correction, welcome advice to try to take it into the system and really absorb it and figure out a way to make themselves better people, That's something that God loves in his children. Because we realize that we're flawed human beings, that we're sinful, that our natures are not perfect, and our mind and our soul are unfortunately not where they need to be. And because of that, we have this spirit of wanting to be better. And this is something, unfortunately, that the Christians at Galatia had at one point, and Paul is saying, I really hate that that's not there anymore. He's saying that back then, you would have been willing to pluck out your own eyes if I ask you to. That's how committed you were to being obedient to God and bending your will to his. Even though Paul would never tell someone to actually do that, he's saying that's the level of dedication you used to have. And now you're treating me like the bad guy Because I'm trying to say, hey, there's some things that you guys are getting wrong and need to correct. And one of the big things that was going on at Galatia is that you had this fight between the Jews and the the Gentile Christians, and they were fighting back and forth about whether the law is still in effect or these dietary laws, and, and Paul's trying to correct them on this, and he's saying, and all of you were giving me all kinds of negative feedback and saying that we we don't want to hear it, we aren't comfortable with this message. He's saying, get back to the place that you originally were. And I think that this, of course, is is written to several different congregations in Galatia. But this is a powerful message for us, too. 
And the reason that I say that is how many of us could say exactly the same thing about ourselves? How many of us, whether it's the Scripture itself and using that as our measuring stick, which we absolutely should do, could look back and say, man, when I first started out, when I first obeyed the gospel, when I first came to know God and know Christ, I was so enthusiastic. I was so ready to do anything, go on a mission trip, teach the gospel to others, and now I've just kind of fallen into a rut. And now when somebody does try to correct me or, or tries to steer me in the right direction, I kind of bite back and lash out. That's not the attitude we're supposed to have. We're supposed to welcome this spirit of growth. And we're supposed to never be content with where we are now. That's what it means to be zealous. That while we're probably a lot better off than we used to be, while we're probably a lot closer to God than we used to be, we're never really satisfied. We're never, we never get to the point to where we say, yep, my relationship with God is going pretty good. I'm just going to kind of cruise from here on out. Nobody should ever get to that point, no matter how good you are. We should always welcome correction. We should always welcome people that are trying to lovingly help us improve ourselves, to strengthen our fellowship with our fellow man and, and with God, of course, as well. And when we have that attitude, when we welcome the work, when we welcome whatever it is, whatever challenge that God has ahead of us, that's when we're really starting to, to cook with, with grease. That's when we're really starting to spiritually grow. And I think all of us have a tendency to fall into this kind of rut, this kind of complacency that, that we think, you know, we're not really committing any quote unquote big sins. And we've gotten a lot of the really obvious bad stuff out of our way. And so now it's just time for us to kind of relax and wait for the Lord to come back and go to heaven. We're soldiers on a battlefield. This is not a downtime for us. This is not something that you can just cruise. This is not something that you can just kind of sit back and wait. God has us here to work. God has us here because he wants us to be better people by living in this world and help make the world better around us. And that's the kind of zeal that Paul was looking for in the Christians at Galatia. And that's the same kind of zeal that our Father wants out of us. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.